Shares in Yahoo tumbled more than 2% at the opening bell after the company admitted that more than a half a million users of its popular email service may have had their accounts hacked. The facts date back to before 2014. They raise fresh questions about cybersecurity. Mark Thompson has more. It's been called the biggest hack ever. Information from half a billion email accounts stolen from one server, Yahoo. They believe the perpetrators were state-sponsored. Security analysts are warning they won't be the last to be attacked. It is becoming more and more common that those databases are under attack. I think companies like Yahoo are doing the right thing. They're notifying the media, they're notifying their, their consumers, and they've got to make sure they do the right things to remedy things for their customers as well. But these things are not going to go away. Names, birth dates, addresses and phone numbers were among the details stolen during the hack, which took place two years ago. Yahoo says it's now taken steps to protect its users. Experts suggest everyone with an online account takes the following precautions when picking their passwords. Don't use the same for every account, use complicated passwords, don't share your password and change it frequently. Just because your bank account information wasn't stolen, oh, it's just my email and my password, what could they possibly have? Well, they have access to your entire circle of friends, all of the businesses that you do business with. Anything that you've put in email, all of that stuff is now vulnerable. Analysts also recommend being careful not to enter passwords when using public Wi-Fi, which can be easily attacked. They also suggest using two-step verification systems whenever possible. Well, for more, we're joined by Fabrice Eppelboin, who teaches at the French Political Science Institute Sciences Po, also the co-founder of Yogo Shah. Hello, uh, F Fabrice. Uh, Yogo Shah, thanks for being with us. Yogo Shah, me. a bug bounty platform. First of all, explain to us what is a bug bounty platform? Well, it's a platform with, on one side, ethical hackers, and on the other side, company who are looking to find their security flaws, like the one used on Yahoo. And uh, So hang on, you've got hackers who yeah. you pay to try to hack people's companies. We don't really pay them. Company do pay them, and okay. they use our platform to pay them for to, them to, to find... To test their system. To test the system and find security flows. And if they find a security flow, they, they get paid. Are you surprised by what we're seeing? Biggest hack ever. Not really. Uh, those things happen every day. They're not every publicized. Day? Not such huge hacks, but those kind of things happen every day. Uh, usually, they're quite discreet and nobody talks about them. It's getting more and more popular to speak out about what's going on in the cyber world. Why are they speaking out then in that case? Because it's Yahoo that came out, uh, sent out emails to everybody this morning to all their users. Well, it's a fuzzy situation. First of all, Yahoo is about to be sold to Verizon for nearly $5 billion. So it's a very strange timing. And there is a, a diplomatic and political situation between the United States and Russia. So uh, Russia being the usual villain uh, is not uncommon in the American diplomatic language. Now, I was reading this morning an analysis and a lot of the people they were interviewing are people who run these antivirus software companies. Uh, and they're saying, oh, yeah, Yahoo, their, their security wasn't as good as the competition. But it's hard, it's hard to know. Are, are well, they interested parties when they say that? Is Yahoo any worse than Google? Or oh, Google uh, is probably the most secure uh, B2C company in the world. Uh, Yahoo is not as good, but still, they're not that bad. Uh, the thing is, nobody's perfect in this world, and there are always security flaws everywhere, even in the best, most protected system. So the hack dates back to before 2014. Do we know who did it? No. Um, usually, attribution in such case are, is really, really difficult. Not to mention that there is a very tense diplomatic situation between R Russia and the United States. So using Russians as the usual bad guy is really becoming a habit. Uh, a few years ago, it was the Chinese, uh, including in France. Every time a hack happened, it was always the Chinese. Now it's Russian. Okay, so in the work you do at Yogosha, right, mm -hmm. how, how often, what's the motive? Why, why do people hack? Is it for criminal reasons, to steal people's details the, so they can... Uh, there are many reasons. The, the most usual reasons are criminal reasons, to get tons of email, to do spam or phishing, 
or to sell those uh, emails on the darknet for other people to, you, to do spam or phishing. Uh, then comes uh, state-sponsored hacking. Uh, it can be interesting for a foreign state to have all those email accounts because well, let's imagine the Russian did it. They have many Russian citizens using a Yahoo email, so they can hack those accounts and understand what's going on. Or they can hack politicians using uh, Yahoo emails. Uh, I personally know a few politicians using their uh, Yahoo emails to transmit sensitive information, which is not a clever thing to do. Uh, and last but not least, you can have activists doing that. But in the Yahoo case, it doesn't really sound like any activist activity. So if you were a betting man, who do you think did it? I would say cyber criminals using those accounts to do some spamming or phishing. By the way, those uh, part of those accounts were on sale on the darknet almost a year ago. So in the security community, everybody knew that Yahoo got hacked big time. All right, let's get back to what you were saying about how uh, it's coming uh, amid tense diplomatic times. You've had a string of incidents, right? We've had this group called Fancy Bears uh, leak uh, the data from uh, uh, athletes at the Olympics. And uh, we've had now the latest news, uh, low-level White House staffers getting hacked and Michelle Obama's Gmail reportedly being hacked. It seems as though her passport details might be out there on the net. Yeah, it is actually. Uh, a few staff from the, the White House has been hacked. Uh, Hillary Clinton's email has been, some of those emails have been released by the American Justice. Other of those emails... And she squarely released. blames the Russians. Everybody blames the Russians. That's the, the best thing to do for uh, considering the, American, the situation the United States are in. It's always the Russian. In the case of uh, the... Um uh, fancy bears, though it does seem like payback, right? Yeah, it definitely. For the fact that the like Russians uh, uh, were banned over doping it sounds like payback, just like hacking uh, official emails sounds like a payback for uh, American sanctions and European sanctions against Russia. Uh, and we will probably so it's plausible, but we're not sure. It's very plausible, but we are not sure. We will never be sure. And considering the fact that the United States is the major state sponsor hacker, they kind of lack some credibility. Major state sponsor of hacker, you're of course referring to the Snowden revelations. Uh, Absolutely. Uh, in that particular case, by the way, just uh, Yahoo, where do they stand as far as, did, were they cooperative with the NSA? Or? They were, they were in the PRISM affair. So they are definitely cooperating with the NSA, just like every other major American company. To be fair, they don't really have any choice. Uh, there is a law in the United States called the Patriot Act. And by the law, they have to comply with the NSA. So if the NSA calls Yahoo and asks them for information, they have to comply. Not only that, but if the NSA puts a gag order on Yahoo, they can't legally say anything. Can't, can't legally say anything. Uh, when we look ahead at those accusations that it's the Russians, you were saying that uh, it was uh, before it was the Chinese being accused, now it's the Russians. Is there a chance that uh, we could see uh, disruptions of the U.S. Uh, presidential election, of uh, people voting uh, uh, with electronic ballots? Uh, that uh Oh, the electronic ballots have been hacked. They are quite easy to hack. So electronic vote is in no way a secure way to uh, be a democratic state. It's uh, Those are really easy to hack, especially the American ones. But... There is no way to secure an election using electronic ballots. No way to secure it? So what's your prediction? How's it going to go in November? Could we really see... Uh, we uh, could see some hacking of the electronic ballots, but what we are seeing is already pretty impressive. We're seeing some probably state-sponsored hacker uh, interfering in a campaign, revealing information about Hillary Clinton and destroying Hillary Clinton's reputation. How so? by exposing the truth, uh, just like WikiLeaks did before, uh, just showing official documents that you can't deny and exposing Hillary Clinton's lie. And God knows every politician lies, but in nowadays, it's very difficult to lie because you can oppose to lie some hard fact hacked into your email or into any information system. So it sounds like you're, you're making the argument 
for her keeping that server that she kept, uh, that private server when she was Secretary of State? No, no, definitely not. There, there is no way Hillary Clinton, even with a serious security service, could have been more secure than by using the usual White House official email server, who is really, really secure. So it was definitely a fault on a security point of view and on a legal point of view. She shouldn't have used all, uh, her personal email to transmit any kind of sensitive information. And this applies to any kind of politician everywhere in the world. All right, one final question for you. Fabrice Epelois, if you're saying that um, some information can be compromised or there will be obviously people who are contesting the poll after the U.S. election, are you making the argument we should just go back to the good old-fashioned paper ballot? We should definitely go back to the old-fashioned paper ballot, oh, even though Vladimir Putin proved recently that this wasn't really secure. But at least it's very easy to spot a fraud, whereas in, in a computer device, it can be really tricky. All right. Spies use typewriters. Voters use the paper ballot. Uh, Fabrice Pedmoin, many thanks uh, for, for being with us. Thanks for having me.